well. The, t t the message that I sent out this morning, I thought, you know, nobody responded. I thought, sure, somebody would say something back when I advertised a gossip fest. <laughs> I thought it was an invitation. Yeah, I just thought, I thought, sure, someone would make some sort of remark about it. Like, what's new? Or... So, yes, um, the, uh, there's a couple of themes that are, that, that I want to talk about, I want to kind of go with in this, in, in this discussion. Um, first, uh, the, the, the main idea, and I do this, I do this talk in a, in, uh, a different way um, about like once every six months. Once every six months I'll do, I'll have this, this topic will come up and hopefully Hopefully it's different than I did it six months ago. But anyway, you forgot what happened last week, so it doesn't matter. So uh, the, 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 the basis of, uh, of the talk, uh, where I first started getting it, was in the 10th tradition in the recovery programs that, uh, about um, having no opinion on outside issues. And so then this develops into this into this really a very wide and deep topic. So when you think about, first there's this whole idea about opinions. And last week, I think I tweeted out that, um, if I re re release my opinion, then I, I, I'm free, free from the burden of having to be right and the, the task of proving it. And we, we see that really, that opinion itself is the cause of much suffering. And Rumi said that all of the wars in the world were all a disagreement about words. So what is that then, this, um, this, this disagreement about words? Was you having one opinion of what it means and me having another? And so this, you see, and then, you know, but, but we, we have an entitlement uh, in our mind concerning this <laughs> thing about opinions, because people tell you, they, you've heard it many times, you're, you're, you, you're entitled to your own opinion. The question I want to ask this morning is, but that's fine, you're entitled to it, but do you want it? Is it really helpful to you? And uh, I think that there are some, there are some areas where it may be, and we talk about that for a second, that, that um, in regards to my mission and purpose, I should have some, some ideas that I hold as values. And you could call them opinions, because my value, it actually has been proven to me in the past that I have had some values that, that uh, actually were non-existent principles, but I thought it was a value. And uh, uh, so, so we want to be open-minded, and we want to we we want to uh, to not be closed to uh, a, a, a different point of view. But in regards to what's the most important things that we do uh, in our life, and we've we've talked about this as we've gone through this series, is that the idea of service being like the basis. For our for a really for a fulfilled life that we would that to serve is really uh, Jesus said it was to be great but I mean really what it, to me I look at it like to serve means to have a great life and uh, and the opportunities just open up then and it turns out that. Success in just about every endeavor that we would decide to get involved with, uh, when we do it with the the intention of being of service, it goes better. It goes better. We're more effective, uh, and and I believe this is just again here's here's a belief that I have. You could say it's an opinion that uh, as we do that, we're actually compensated for it, not just but not just monetarily, uh, but we are. We are compensated. We are we we are rewarded with the the sense of accomplishment that we did something well, and and with the right motivation. Uh, 
so, so in regards to that, uh, we could have some some principles and some guidelines as to how we do things, and and uh, we could uh, we could, as I say, we could call them opinion, and uh, and then that's how we go forth. That would be like our our little blueprint for how we're going to do our stuff. But then what we would ask ourselves is anytime we start to get upset because uh, we disagreed with something we saw or heard or uh, we, would, uh, we would ask ourselves, does this, does this issue that I am now deciding to take, take uh, umbrage about, does this issue have anything to do with me? Does it have anything to do with my purpose? Does it have anything to do with me living a happy life? Or do I just want to uh, be disagreeable? Do I just want to be judgmental? So Jesus makes a couple references to this, this idea. Um, one of the disciples comes to him and tells him a story, and he asks very bluntly, he says, what has that to do with you? So this is, wow. Oh, now, see, that's, that's tough. I mean, I think that's like, you know, if, you, if, if one of your friends, like, came to you and started telling you the story about another friend who just happened to not be present, and you said, what does that to do with you? They'd go to somebody else and start talking about you. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Ultimately, it's all right. But uh, there's probably a better way to, probably a, a more diplomatic uh, way to deal with it. But we think about in Jesus' position, he was the teacher, and the disciple was the student, and needed to hear it, right? So there's certain, there's certain conditions where you want to be very direct, uh, in your questioning of why this report is coming to you. Uh, I, um, another time, uh, uh, you know, someone else comes to him and gives him this, uh, tells him a tale of uh, what, this other person's shortcomings, and uh, he tells him, you know, you need to remove the plank from your own eye so that you can see to remove the splinter from your brothers. And so this, of course, this is pointing out that here's the problem. Our, uh, uh, what this, this, I, and we've talked about this many times, this, this distraction of having to be right and, and coming with judgment about the things that are happening around us and what we see other people do, this is the plank in our eye. This is, it's like, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And we, we need to ask ourselves, what, you know, what is it? What, what is so attractive about this? And now, of course, in Miracles identifies the reason, you know, pretty clearly. It says the reason that you, that we want to judge others is so that we can shift the judgment from ourselves. We project our own guilt out into the world and we observe how other people are, behaving badly, and part of the whole distraction process is to report to others what's going on. We, uh, and, it, and of course, it's very, it's very interesting the way the dynamic works, because we have all sorts of partners in this gossip fest. It, sometimes we will have, and, and we really, on, on different levels, we see them as allies. When we're having the conversation, about the other person, we are seeing this person we're talking to as our, they're, they're, we're together, right? And we, and actually we're together in a way against the other person who we're talking about, or the group of people who we're talking about. And this, you know, this, if you start thinking about how the tendrils of this stretch out, it's not just that we're having a, a gossipy conversation about a relative that didn't show up to the family barbecue. It, it's not just that we're gossiping. We start off talking about how we're concerned about someone else's behavior and they're getting themselves in trouble. And all of a sudden, it goes from concern into, you know, some pretty good gossip. And uh, but, uh, but listen, I just want you to understand. I'm not gossiping now. I just want you to understand the situation. It's what's happening. I just want you to see it clearly so maybe, you know, you and I can figure out a way to help this person. And, but, uh, 
but it goes to groups. When we see other groups of people acting in a way that somehow present a threat to us, then this provides a whole conversation. Uh, we have the, the, the phenomena that we see in the politics of the day, uh, present, you know, very, very present uh, politics where you've got um, a whole, I, I love, have you watched, have you watched uh, Veep on HBO? Show is brilliant. Okay, it's a political show. It's it's brilliant, and the and the observations in it I think are 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 accurate enough to be scary, as to just exactly how the politics in Washington work. But the interesting thing about the show is they never identify in any of the politicians. They never tell you what party they're that they belong to, and the reason they don't is because actually they could be either one because. None of them really care about all they care. All they care about is the is the 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 pursuit of power and then holding on to it once it's acquired. And you can see there's this whole pecking order thing going on all the time. And everybody everybody's pretty much willing to go along to get along. And so this is what we need to notice. I have some I see I have some strong feelings. I have some opinions about what's happening right now in politics. But I need to understand when I observe that, that I am acting similarly to someone who may be on the other side of the issue who has some very strong feelings and opinions about how my, the group that I have more affinity for is thinking, right? So I mean, just need to, uh, and, and you can watch. You can actually watch, you can, you can get a sense of, when you watch the news, where the bias is, right? But if you really watch closely and you switch from channel to channel, you'll see that the same tactics are used on, on both sides, so to speak. So what's going on, and this is, the, this, is this whole thing about having opinions and, and how these opinions will actually interfere with our purpose. So when we come to a place where what we do is just try to find the bad things about the person on the other side of an issue, the issue itself kind of gets lost. And, and more importantly, the big issues never get discussed because all of these skirmishes are occurring around smaller issues that can be used as fuel for the fire of fear to get the party, whichever party it is, stirred up. I get these these uh, emails regularly for fundraising emails, and they're all like the, the world is coming to an end, like right now. If you do not send $38 right now, that's it. And uh, and then, when you, by the way, if you try to just send the $38, it doesn't just let you send $38. It tries to get you to give to send more. That's a, that's a side thing, but... It's interesting how that whole thing works out. They actually want more than 38 bucks, but it is a disaster about to happen. And so we're, we're all about excel <coughs> this, this accelerating, and the, the rhetoric keeps getting more and more heated. And when we watch it, sometimes it can be almost like it's a comedy if we want to get our attitude right. It can be like that. Like if 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 if, um, if it wasn't for the fact that there could there actually could be some some serious ramifications, at least for our experience in the material world, which, by the way, we are really going through. It, it's, uh, it, may, it, it is a dream, but it, 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 it seems real enough to us in the midst of it. So, okay, so, so when someone comes to me and wants to tell me a story about you, what do I do? Well, first, I might want to listen just for a moment. And then if it looks like it's going down that road that I know it's gossip, maybe I could change the subject. Gently, without making this other person feel like they're less than, right? If, um, if they come and they are uh, reporting uh, something that seems to be detrimental to maybe an organization that we're all involved in, and uh, 
and they're, they're coming from the perspective of, you know, this is, we've got to do something about this. It's bad for all of us. And it could be any organization. It could be a club, a fellowship, a church. It could be a, a job situation. Uh, in that case, maybe what I would do is say, you know, you may be right. Let's go talk to them about that right now. See what happens then. See if, this, see if the person who's really so adamant about, boy, we got to do something, see how, see how willing they are to actually go and have a conversation with the other person. Usually it dissipates. Uh, so, uh, and, if, um, and if I get a report about how someone's not doing this or that or the other thing, what I might want to do is think of something good about the other person and bring that up. To defend the one who's not there. You know, the Buddhist precepts, uh, one of the Buddhist precepts is, uh, is to refrain from unskillful speech, is what it's called. And it, included in unskillful speech would be lying, harsh speech, idle speech, or slander. Now, all of these things can get, like, like, can be part of this, uh, this whole gossipy or being off track, being uh, talking about things that absolutely have nothing to do with what we're about. And so, so just, so just lying, we find that the re. I think that well, all of this is generated out of some kind of a fear. All of it's generated out of fear. But lying, I think most of the time when people lie, they either are lying to make themselves appear better. Or they're trying to avoid some situation uh, that they figure could be costly in some way, right? Maybe there's other reasons, but I mean, this is this seems to be seems to be it. So we're going to be truthful. We're going to we're going to tell exactly what's going on. Except that we don't always need to do that. Just because we know the truth, and uh, it is really not a reason to have to say it unless unless it's helpful. In some way, so here's where the harsh, where the where the harsh speech comes in, right? So, I, I, I have a feeling, I mean, and again, I can be proved wrong at any time, and I really think that's important to be open to that. But I have a feeling, I have a sense that I know what's going on, and 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 I'm tempted, probably because I'm irritated, to tell you the whole thing, right? I'm gonna just tell you right now. This is what you need to. Like, and that's why, and if you did, that's harsh speech. No, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. I mean, you know, we, you, if, you, if you watch people's behavior, you see people doing that kind of thing with those that are closest to them. It's amazing. They do it all, and people are always yelling at their kids, they're yelling at their spouse, they're yelling, you know, they're yelling at people in the family in that kind of a way. And, uh, and sometimes you'll see them doing it with, with other people, but a lot of times it'll happen at work. Where the, you know you have a relationship with people, you're with them all the time. That's harsh speech. It's not helpful. It's I, I guarantee that it, it will not have the result that you would justify the reason you the reason that you did it. Your justification and rationalization for having the harsh speech, you would say, "Well, I said you know you needed to hear the truth." This kind of thing. It's not going to have the result that that you are espousing right there. It's just not. That's just not going to happen. So we figure a way to present the information. In a helpful way, and that would mean being at the right time, doing it for the right reason, not just having to appear right or appear as an authority, and uh, uh, and, and and in the in the right way, quietly. And uh, idle speech. Here's the here's the thing. Now, see, the Buddhists are tough about this. So, idle speech. So, this is this is part of having opinions that have absolutely nothing to do with what you're about. They have nothing to do with giving compassion, where they have nothing to do with building up community, they have nothing to do with, with actually growing into something, is just sitting around and just idle chatter, just can't shut up. Just, and you know what, it's very interesting. We all know people who, who do this. Uh, they may not come to mind right now, but what we don't know is how much of the time we do it ourselves. It's hard, it seems harder to, to catch ourselves and I, everything, I mean, obviously, if I'm saying it. But something to be thinking about, right? And then uh, s s slander. Slander. 
uh, that, that could you could say that that's um, that that's part of this whole idea of gossip, of to impugn someone's integrity. Uh, this we were talking about this uh, a, a few weeks ago, as this idea of uh, that someone can do all sorts of good things and then they do one they make one mistake and everybody wants to report the mistake. And everybody wants to remember the mistake. And uh, so, and then just this general, how many times, I just think about this myself, is how many times do we, re when we hear something negative in the news, I wonder how many times my, what is my motivation when I go and repeat that to someone else? It's really something to consider. I really need to consider why, why am I repeating this negative thing that I just heard in the news. It seems to me, when I really look at what's going on inside myself, it seems to me that, that there's part of me that wants to just stir things up. There's part of me that wants to just get, uh, get a reaction. There's part, I, I, I don't know. I think, um, I think it's really something that needs to be it's just like one of those things where if I'm mindful, if I'm paying attention, that I can actually figure out why I'm about to say what I'm going to say before I allow the words to trip off my tongue. So think about this, the meditation. Meditation, so there's a light in you which cannot die. And I'm going to suggest that our purpose, when we talk about service and we talk about, you know, uh, uh, being truly helpful, that, that being truly helpful is exactly what the meditation I was talking about, is allowing our light to touch others. And, and really, I mean, the meditation says all light. So that, our, so that our best service is going to come from allowing that light that it says is in us which cannot die, and part of the light that's in everything else, but our best work is going to be by allowing that light to come forth. And I am going to suggest that when we get involved with all of these opinions and reasons to disagree with somebody, almost always somebody who is not present, and disagree with somebody who's not present, and then report that disagreement to another person who, would, for the moment, is our ally, that that blocks the light. It blocks us from feeling the light because we're involved in judgment. It blocks others from, see, from feeling the light for the same reason. I mean, where it's just this whole judgment thing is going on. And also, to just notice, and, and oh, God, you know, I gave, I did the, the wedding yesterday, and uh, I give them the 12 instructions, and this, this is one of the 12 instructions. And in, in the wedding ceremony, this instruction is, speak not ill of each other, speak not ill of others to each other, and neither complain or say the hurtful thing. That's the 10th instruction. So now, and then when I get done with the list, I just tell them nobody's going to be perfect. Because see, when I said, now, the other thing, now you're, you, when I say the first part of it, when I say speak not ill of each other, you're going, yeah, I see, I see how that, because what happens is if we go to someone else and speak ill of, the, of our spouse, of our lover, uh, then that builds up something within us that we take home, even though we don't know. And then if we go home and speak ill of other, other people in our life, it does the same thing when we go back to work, right? When we go back out into the community. It does, we've, we've built up even more bad feeling. But then, and so people say, yeah, you know, that, that sounds right. I mean, I, I know I do it sometimes, but I know that sounds right. But when I say neither complain, as soon as I say complain, I could see people in the audience go, it's like, to not complain? How is this possible to not complain, right? And, and, uh, and so, but we see that when we complain, what we do is we actually make the situation worse than it was before we started the complaint because we solidify it in ourselves. 
And then the last thing is not to say the hurtful thing. Well, this is the thing that we know when we're in a relationship with someone, after we've been with them for a while, we know which buttons to push. We know which strings to pull. And so what I'm saying when I give this 10th instruction is, I, and I know that it's going to happen from time to time, but to be conscious and to know this is exactly what I should not do. This exactly, this is exactly the thing that is going to, and could, I mean, this is the thing. When we go for that, we know, we just know, I can, right now I can just cut them right now if I just say this. And, but we know that if when we do that, what happens? We know that it just, it, it, it just makes things worse. And we may say something. You know, people say we can't ever take it back, right? I always say there's healing available. I always say that no matter how you know, no matter what, how bad the conversation was, there is we can come back from it if if everybody's willing to to work on the forgiveness. But why go through all that work? Shut up. So this is the lesson. This is really the lesson uh, for today. Shut up. <laughs> you don't have to say it. You don't have to talk about it. Just. to say you're thinking about it. And it will, and it will help keep the peace in you and all around you. I think that